Hello everyone, Bridget Casey here today for scrapbookpal.com. We're going to get a sneak peek of the project that we are going to work on today. It's basically a positive affirmation for myself. It is featuring Tim Holtz, the new Brushstroke Butterflies in Bold Text 2. So here are the colors I thought we were going to use along with the Bold Text 2 and the Brushstroke Butterflies with some Nouveau Shimmer Powders and some water. However, I did not end up doing a rainbow um, so but those colors I left them in in case you wanted to do a rainbow just to give you some colors to work with now we're using the Nouveau Shimmer powders in Atlanta's burst and solar flare so I basically sprinkle on a little powder and by sprinkle I mean lightly tap the bottle because a lot comes out so be careful there and then uh, hit it with water and go back and forth until I'm happy. I then want to use the Broken Chevron stencil, but I wasn't getting an effect. So I went and grabbed a kitchen towel and then I was getting a very subtle effect from where that imprint was and I was super happy with it. At this point too, I didn't really know where the project was going. So I thought maybe I would use the stencil again uh, to mimic the uh, imprint that I had with some embossing paste or some glimmer paste, but I didn't end up doing that. Now we're going to use the Make Art Station uh, to ink blend our colors for our butterflies. So I'm going to start with Kitsch Flamingo, then we'll go to Carved Pumpkin, and then Wilted Violet. And I'm just ink blending these onto the watercolor Distress cardstock until I'm happy. If you just have the A2 pieces, you'd need two pieces as opposed to this one, which is eight and a half by five and a half. So I'm just blending this on with my Picket Fence Life Changing Blending Brush until I'm happy with the color. I hit it with a little water, again, for a subtle effect. Today, subtle is the word of the day. And I wanted to show you the seven dies that come in this bold text too. Some are nice and chunky and will be great focal points and others are smaller. I love the variety that we get in this bold text too. So I'm taking a piece of Nina Solar White Classic Crest 80 pound cardstock and I'm going to die cut the die from the bold text too, which says you got this. And I don't know if I'm going to keep this white at this point, I'm using my little mini die cutting machine. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, so I do trim it down so that it's even on both sides. And then I am like, okay, I could put on my project and it looks good with that. Uh, it looks even better when we add the gold glitter there, but I didn't like the white. It was too stark against that beautiful background. So out comes the puppy pad. I spray the Nina Solo, um, classic crest and then I'm putting on shimmer powders with Atlantis burst and solar flare and then spraying it and then I quickly wiped it up with a kitchen towel now I did lose some of the brightness um, on the color when I did that when I picked it up with a kitchen towel but that's okay because I want it to be similar but different for my background I want it to stand out so I was super happy with it I heat set it and now we are adhering it uh, with some thin 3d foam squares on the back to the gold cardstock and that's all set I also hole punched this because I was going to put this in my scrapbook album and it doesn't fit so <laughs> that's a problem for another day uh, the butterflies have been die cut from our ink blended backgrounds. I didn't worry about all the other little pieces because I'm bringing in this uh, metallic foil uh, cardstock that uh, had similar colors to the ones I chose. So there was an orange, a pink, and a purple. And so these are going to be the layers on my butterflies. So now it's important that I keep all of those little pieces as well as I thought I was just going to throw away the um, metallic foil butterfly, but I was like, ooh, I can fold the wings up. I, you give me a butterfly, I'm folding wings up. It's just happening. <laughs> so I was super stoked when I was like, ooh, I can fold the wings up. So you could on this, I end up just putting foam tape in the center, but you could put it on the wings as well. So we're going ahead and we're getting all this, uh, all the little pieces poked out. Then we'll start adhering the pieces. We don't need the body of the butterfly. I decided for the body, I wanted that to be different. So I was going to cut that from black glitter cardstock. Now you see me kind of fidgeting with the dies here to get just the body cut. You could do that with the other cardstocks. I don't like doing that. I 
it don't have the patience but the dies are such that you could cut out certain sections with certain colors if you wanted to but I just don't like to play with fiddly bits so I just die cut the whole thing and if I have extra pieces I likely will just toss them in the bin so now I'm going ahead and I'm getting my pieces put onto the butterflies and they do go together simple. You see me kind of fidgeting here uh, with the pieces but I didn't have the packaging right next to me. If you have that packaging right next to you, it is super easy. So that's my hint um, for using this die set is to keep the packaging right at hand so you can look over and see what pieces go where because they're very easy to see. And there's also um, imprint or like creases where they're supposed to go. My machine just did not give me um, a good uh, imprint so I could line it up easily. So again, that packaging with the bold text too came in super duper handy. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put uh, adhesive on the back. I like to use the Barely Art Precision Glue. Uh, it dries clear and I live in Maine, so in the winter it doesn't freeze. That's one of my huge selling points and I just, I love this liquid adhesive. It's the only one I use now. So now I'm bending up the wings and I'm just having, it's like an interactive card for me. I'm just having fun bending up the wings and looking at the shiny bits and, and all that. So I'm figuring out now where all the little pieces do go together and I'm putting those on. My orange one is complete. I've even put the body on and now my purple one is almost complete. I'm putting the body on there. I am gluing the body down flat. So all the pieces on the top of the butterfly are glued down flat. Flat. Um, if you wanted to have dimension on those pieces as well, I would recommend multiple cutting and layering your pieces up for that. They are um, kind of thin. It would be difficult, I think, to put some foam adhesive behind them. So if you want uh, multiple layers on the front, I would stack cardstock. So there we have them all put together and now I'm bending them and I'm applying a thin uh, 3L foam strip right behind the butterfly body because I want those wings to bend up. So I don't want to have any adhesive over on the side of the wings. If you were going to mail this, this is what I was kind of talking about a few minutes ago. If you were going to mail this or put this in a uh, flat page and you needed it to uh, kind of have dimension but not crush it, I would put uh, foam squares underneath the wings as well. That will preserve your dimension but you'll be able to mail it or put it in a pocket. This I was not going to put into a pocket and, and still won't. Um, I just will maybe trim it down <laughs> um, and do the holes in the correct section. So I wanted to make sure where my butterflies were going to go so I just am kind of playing with the layout here and then I will get that all figured out. So the um, sentiment uh, box will get some 3D foam squares put on there because I wanted a little dimension. The butterflies will get put down flat. So here I'm using some masking tape to hold down my panel because it's it's kind of bent and uh, yeah. So then I'm using a T-square ruler to put my sentiment in the middle. My, my tape kept popping up. I should have brought back out my station with the magnets, but I didn't think of it. Um, so as you can see, I'm putting glue on the back of the butterflies. I'm being careful, as you'll see on this one, I'm being careful if there are any holes on the butterflies to not put glue there because I don't want those top wings to get any glue and to get stuck down. I want those to stay up. So we're adhering our final butterfly here. I will remove the tape so that you guys can get a look at the dimension. I am super stoked with how these came out. I'm so happy. Uh, and I hope that you guys will try this project when you get home the brushstroke butterflies and the Boltex too. Thank you so much for watching with us today at scrapbookpal.com. We hope that you will uh, subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Until next time, I wish you all happy crafting.